I think the first idea was that given the three terminals, whatever we do in the center should be pure and simple. It should be something that becomes like the centroid of the whole airport. So here there was an opportunity to create something that would draw people to the airport, that would make the airport experience different, more pleasurable and even memorable. Changi wanted to uh, increase the capacity of Terminal 1. And one of the issues that they had was the parking lot was very limited because it was a surface parking lot. They were hesitant to build a parking garage in front of Terminal 1 because as you, know, as you come up the driveway, you see the parking garage, right? So they realized that the only way they could increase the capacity of the parking was to get it underground. And now that's extremely expensive construction. So they thought, okay, in order to make it viable, let's have some extra shopping over there. But how do you get people to come to that shopping area? And there's so many shopping malls all around. So one thing they thought was that maybe if we had some sort of an attraction, and Moshe said it right away, he's like, you know what, let's make the garden the attraction. Let's make the best garden if possible. Let's get nature in. Let's make it a timeless piece so that everybody could enjoy it. You think of the great botanical gardens and it's some form of a vault or a dome. And we started with that, you know, just large domes. Didn't feel right. It felt like it lacked internal focus. Yeah, the initial concept for the project was shaped by a lot of different factors. And all these things came together uh, to shape the, actually the geometry of the roof, which is quite complex. We worked together with a phenomenal team the team was just not architects, it was engineers, climate and sustainability experts, horticulturalists. And each one of these team members have, had, a, um, had a say in the shaping. The design of the roof was all about scale and pattern. I mean, it has to stand up, but it also has to look good. So there was a lot of work with, with uh, Moshe and with Safety's office in general to try to figure out what the right pattern was, what your eye should see as you looked at the structure. I was worried about everything standing up and working properly, but there was so much more that was going on architecturally that you can't really make a line between structure and architecture. The structure has two phases, the kind of shell phase and the tension phase, which I think created the opportunity for lightness. But I think the studies that were made to slowly, gradually transition the depth of the units, which when you look at the building, looks completely natural, contributed to the sense of lightness. So even though it's deep in some areas, the structure feels very, very light. So the way that the, the roof is held up is that you have a perimeter support that goes all along the perimeter of the building at level five. You have 14 groups of columns that are in, inset from that perimeter. And then you have nothing else. You have a span that is from the perimeter to the columns. And then the, the zone that is between the columns where, the, where you see the waterfall is a tension, a tension cone. Everything is in tension there. And it's being held up by a compression ring that's created just above the, the 14 columns. And all this stands up. Figuring out how everything was going to be put together, how it was going to be detailed, really relied quite heavily on BIM, on building really accurate computer models, and then using the latest technologies to actually fabricate that. Actually, in the end of the day, all the panels being unique were not as big of a headache as one would think. Uh, we worked with Bureau Happel, with the client, with the construction team, and the specialist subcontractors to come up with methodologies so that Actually, the variety was less of a, of a challenge uh, today than it might have been even five years ago. Well, there's two very significant challenges we had in this project. The first was around making sure the plants could thrive, which means getting the right temperature, the right air movement, the right humidity, and the right light level, critically. And one was around getting the people to thrive. For a complex project that is very integrated like this, there is never one point where you say, right, that's the answer, done and dusted. It becomes an 
iteration of saying this is what we think the answer is let's test it let's work together let's see what architecturally can be done or and environment or structurally to, to try and constantly move forwards and constantly try and get something that works towards a common goal. The waterfall was probably the single biggest challenge we had on the project. There's only one waterfall of a similar scale done inside a building in the world before, which happened to be a building we worked on. And we understood from that how critical it was to get the waterfall accurately modeled before we built the space and get the airflows accurately understood. And there just simply wasn't any suite of software, any standard way of approaching this type of physics problem. So we had to go back to first principles, develop numerous ways of modeling this type of question to work out what it was going to do. Because if we got it wrong, it would have destroyed the air conditioning, it would have destroyed the comfort inside the space. If we got it right, it was going to add pleasant drafts and, and pleasant air motion to, to the space. I think the biggest challenge in this project for a landscape architect was creating something that feels like you're outdoors indoors. And that wasn't only our challenge, but that was the challenge of working together with all of the different consultants because what we needed to make was an environment that wasn't your normal indoor environment, that's uh, something designed for people and mechanical systems, uh, but something that was designed for plants and other living life forms. What we were excited about uh, in the landscape design was creating a forest valley and a canopy park that then had moments of highlight and moments of attraction within those landscape elements. What we tried to do here was create uh, a, a sort of interior landscape architectural ecology, um, a, a cross section of plants and a palette of plants that are particularly suited to the kind of environment that we were able to work together to make. The facade is one of the most important parts of the design um, where really the fact of this being an architectural space and being a space that's designed to grow plants um, is really uh, highest uh, in, in its interaction. One of the marvels of Jewel is that it is a network of systems that coalesce in a holistic way. Each has its own place in the architecture. Each has its own expressive power to the architecture. And when they come together, it's like a symphony, like everything is working together. When you walk on the trails and you see these quiet corners on the trail where you can sit and just relax and enjoy the garden, you really feel connected to the garden. And you, you know, it's, it's amazing. You have a shopping mall behind you, but you don't even realize that. It is fascinating to me that we are in an airport, we are in an urban city, and you can create this beautiful uh, space that people can relax. The feeling of integration of the natural world, the constructed world, the design world, and the um, sort of uh, natural forms of life is something that permeates every part. And I think that's the thing I found so remarkable when I came after it was complete, was how integrated it feels at every moment. You, you arrive here with your suitcase and you see that waterfall and it just stops everything. All the craziness of the airport, whatever you had on your mind, and you can just be here. And it's a real testament to you know, having created something beautiful and surprising where you didn't expect to find it. You just see hundreds of, or thousands of people smiling, taking photos and being you know, in a place they're enjoying. As building designers, you don't often get to see, you know, that number of people just being happy in a building you work for. Singaporeans feel like, wow, this is a new gateway to our city, which they didn't have. And I think that's a big deal because we don't design buildings saying, hey, that's going to be an icon or that's going to be a gateway to your city. But it, it just happens, you know, and people embrace it. And then they come up with this idea, that's our new gateway. And I think that's very satisfying.